Hi guys and welcome back to Dan's Kitchen Garden. Just before this video starts, please go along and hit that subscribe button to join the family. Let's get this video started. So first off, um, in July, it's my birthday on the 25th of July and I did it last year and a couple of people in the comment section said that you should do a little wish list uh, for your birthday so they could buy me something and support the channel. So what I'm going to do in this video is in the link below you'll see a little Amazon uh, wish list if you go along if you wish to buy something for the channel to help this channel grow it's all much appreciated but today I'm down the allotment I have just been doing most of the weeding most of the day it's been an absolute nightmare so what I thought I'd do is give you a July allotment tour so let's go and have a look at the allotment in July so I'll start off on allotment one as we move down to this bed first the butternut squash as you can see they're just starting to take it off these are the winter ones so these are going to be ready in about october time so they they are normally a little bit slow at this time of the year but as the as next month comes in they should start putting on a lot of weight and start producing little butternut squash uh, the two leftover courgettes i had i've just put them in here I haven't had anything off them yet, but they're just starting to flower. We have got a beautiful sunflower. It's a very small one for some reason, but it's a beautiful sunflower. Adds a little colour to the allotment. Uh, the potatoes. This year they just don't seem to be so thick. I don't know if it's the sun, because we haven't had much sun. We've had more rain in this summer. So I'm not too sure there. I did harvest one row and they were very tiny. So hopefully if I leave them in a little bit longer, they should survive. The only thing I've got to keep an eye out for is obviously blight. But at the moment, touch wood, we haven't got no blight on the allotment and the potatoes seem to be absolutely fantastic. The runner beans. I put these runner beans in uh, probably about four or five weeks ago and they are just just starting to take up the canes I'm, i don't know what it is with runner beans there is a lot of people on this site who's having trouble with growing runner beans this year and we don't know if it's just the seeds or just just the time of the year we just seem to be having problems growing the runner beans so I'll, what i'll do is i'll move over to this section here as you can see i probably you can probably tell on the camera i've put more bark in and the reason why I've put more bark in is because I've cleared all the old bark out and I've just added new uh, bark into just to reduce and the other stuff what come out of it I've just put it on top of the beds as a good peat and the, as you can see it's breaking down pretty well and hopefully by the end of the year that would be absolutely fantastic I'll move up to my Brussels sprouts as you can see they're just starting to take off too this is a uh, this year I've only got 12 in and the reason why that is because last year I had far too many and they weren't very good growers so this year I'm trying to give them a little bit more room a little bit more space and hopefully they can bulk out a little bit more so I've seen on Facebook pages that their Brussels sprouts, some people's are really big. And the reason why is because this year they've had a lot more time down their allotments as they've been on fur furlough and obviously with the lockdown. But mine are doing well and hopefully they will pick up very soon. Uh, I've took quite a bit of harvest from this rhubarb. I did thought it was absolutely rubbish, but it seems like it's it's going to be quite good i've had quite a good harvest of it as we move to the wild pond as you can see there's not much action in there now but i have seen tadpoles and frogs in this little pond i was actually clearing out the tomato bed and the a frog jumped out of the pond and absolutely made me cat myself so i've got to be aware of the frogs obviously when i'm digging around and doing a bit few bits and pieces uh, the first time I've grown celeriac, as you can see I've got six plants in here. I've never grown it before, I don't know what it's going to turn out like. I just thought I'd plant it in just to see 
what it would turn out like if it would be any good but at the moment it seems all okay the tomatoes are just starting to come up I was a little bit worried about this thinking that it was blight but it's not it's where the frost got to the tomato plants when I placed them out there earlier on in the season but as you can see we're getting tomatoes on them and the ones in the greenhouse which I'll probably show you on the next video uh, twice the size of this and hopefully in the next couple of days I should have tomatoes and the cucumbers in the greenhouse I've had so many as well so it's been a non-stop so it was a good idea planting out in the greenhouse as well got some more courgettes these are slightly more advanced as the other two as you see and they're getting to the stage now where it's getting time to harvest some courgettes as you can see we've got one probably ready there for harvest and there is a few more which I can see so yum yum they'll be in my tum very soon uh, these were turnips for some reason they've gone to seed uh, going up to seed I don't know what's going on with them um, maybe I should just have a little pull on camera of one and as you can see they're just tiny little turnips for some reason I don't know what's going on now I have to have a look to see what what's going on there probably the lack of sun and water is probably confusing them and they're just struggling on growing but this is the best crop again this year the sweet corn just look at it absolutely fantastic we always get a bumper crop of sweet corn and the one thing you must remember to do is when you see these tassels come out of the bottom is just run your hand at the top of the seeds and then just make the tassels with the things i've already done it once it looks like some of them are already blown off blown off so i just continue going around and doing that every couple of days we're going to have another bumper crop of sweet corn by the looks of it so guys that is how the allotment one is looking in july so let's go and have a look at allotment two so i'll start off with allotment two here as you can see we've still got this little bit of a wild area here this is all going to be cleared as i said in the previous video and this is going to be a compost area for next year uh, i've took half a row of potatoes out of here these were the first earlies and they were a good crop i've got a couple more at the end and then this is ready to be cleared um, on this ground next year this is going to be covered with fruit trees uh, running in rows we're going to have three rows of fruit trees uh, this was the aunt bassie the aunt bessie potatoes and they seem to be doing really well they're not ready to be picked yet there's no deadness on them or they don't look like they're ready to be picked so i will leave them in another one with the french beans it just seemed to be taken off as you can see down there i've just got some beans coming french beans coming on but it's the first time this year of growing french beans this one's got quite a few on just allowing to get a little bit fatter uh, this is another thing that's took off this year Last day. 
early set of beetle I put in. And as you can see, the bottom up absolutely fantastic. They'll be ready for harvest very, very soon. Uh, the parsnip this year are a bit here to miss. I've got about 10 coral parsnips in a row here. And then I have got another row of beetroot going at the back of it. this video and you're not a subscriber please hit that subscribe button and make sure the bell notification is switched on at all times to notify you when i upload a video until the next video i'll catch you later